after shares of GameStop surged over the last couple of weeks, now stocks of video game retailer starting to come back to earth, falling 72% in just two days. Yikes. So that comes after Robinhood or other retail trading apps continue to limit buying stocks pursued by day traders, including on GameStop. Co-founder of Democracy at Work, Professor of Economics Richard Wolf, he joins us now to discuss really just what this entire situation tells us about our market economy. Professor Wolf, thanks for joining us, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Glad to be here. So just give us your general reaction. What does this episode expose about the American financial system and Wall Street at large? Well, it exposes the kind of childish story that we tell people that when you go to the stock market, you are investing in companies that you believe uh, will be part of the American upswing and you will participate in that upswing by making your money available. All that kind of uh, kind of kindergarten stuff that has always been false. I mean, from the beginning of stock market several centuries ago, everyone who ever participated in them learned for if they paid attention that yes, there were some people who invested according to the kindergarten story. That is part of it. But there's an enormous other part of it that is pure gambling in which people hype one or another company or industry, knowing that if they can get people to believe it, they'll come in and buy the shares. So others seeing that happen, pile in until it looks like it's gone too far. Then they rush for the exits to pile out, creating what is called politely volatility. But it, it, what it does teach is that there's a big disconnect between what the stock market does and what the real world is all about. And that's something we've seen over the last year anyway, as the world collapses economically because of COVID, but the stock market zooms up. It's just another way of seeing the basic disconnect that's there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that was my favorite was the hand wringing about the fundamental value. Oh, this this stock price doesn't reflect the fundamental value of GameStop as if the other stock prices do and as if it's not constantly manipulated just most of the time by the gigantic players. Do you think that this episode has helped to destroy that kindergarten story and expose the reality of what's actually going on? Yeah. Along with everything else that's happening, uh, that's true. You know, we teach in the university that often it's it's a kind of news cycle promoted by people involved in the stock market, getting the general public, or at least that part of it that has any money to invest, to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. There's the famous tulip mania back at the early 18th century that's often used as the example. Uh, if you pump information through the internet these days, through newspapers and radio in the old days, then you can get people to start doing something, then you gamble on what they're going to be doing, and then you see what the stock market's about. It's about people gambling on how successfully they may have hoodwinked the public with carefully planted information of one sort or another. So, Professor, let's talk about that because I think it's important, which is that there's one view that some people have had is like, well, the answer to this is let's just make it easier for everybody to day trade. And I'm like, well, I think that's a problem. Uh, <laughs> what do you think is a better, more equitable you know, solution to addressing the obvious rage at Wall Street that there exists in terms of the sympathy for the story, but in terms of actually giving people an equitable stake in our society? Well, I think you'd have to make it an equitable stake. We don't have an equitable stake. 10% of the people in this country own 80% of the shares. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that really matter in terms uh, of what goes on on a daily basis. And, and as uh, Crystal said, it's a tiny number of big companies that amass the money to make things happen. And they, of course, have a lot of say about what gets into the press. Let me take a step back and explain something. We don't know what's going on in a corporation. We allow corporations to give us information, which the newspapers duly repeat, about what's going on. But if you've ever been in a company, you know that there is such a thing as, quote, creative accounting, in which what you say, even in the documents you provide to the government, can be as easily misrepresented as it can be, in fact, honest. And there's lots of incentive 
uh, to be dishonest. There's a, a report in the latest issue, the January issue of Justice Quarterly, a study of, of, of legal proceedings that shows that a majority of the Fortune 500 companies that have had problems before the SEC are the biggest well-known companies in the country that have the funds to systematically, how shall I say it, put a good face on yes. what they're doing. And that shapes what people then are gambling about. You can see the levels of remove from the reality. Yeah, I think that's correct. And you also rightly point out that this episode with the Redditors and with GameStop doesn't happen in isolation. It comes after a year in which there was an extraordinary transfer of wealth upwards. Um, what is your assessment of kind of where the economy is now, where we might be heading, some of the plans that Joe Biden has and intends to, to pass now through Congress? Um, what type of a trajectory do you think we're on at this moment? Well, I'm going to borrow from my wife, who's a psychotherapist, and, and use psychological terms because I think her insights are better than most of mine or my, my economist colleagues. I think what we have here is a denial. This is the worst crisis in American capitalism in at least a century. It's a combination of a crash, one of the worst we've had of our economy, and at the same time, a public health catastrophe. Each of them is making the other one worse, and together they are something we've never had. The Great Depression didn't have a, a public health crisis. The, the crisis of the flu in uh, 1918 didn't have a crash at the same time. The reason I mention it is you've got to have a response that is equally unprecedented to deal with a problem that's this big. And my fear, and I'd be as blunt as I know how, my fear is that what the Biden administration is doing is much too little, much too hesitant, much too focused on accommodating the Republicans and so on than the problem needs. And then we'll see the Republicans three years from now or two years from now pointing to the lack of bigger progress and using it against the Democrats because the Democrats plus the Republicans were unwilling to take the steps. They want to deny how serious our problems are. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Thank you, Professor. Really appreciate your insight on this. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll have more rising for you after this.